Hey, what is up, guys? It is Wednesday, and it is Questions with the Audience Wednesday, and this is the Good Vibes Podcast, and I'm bringing you good waves, good vibes, and good times, all from the comfort of my own home. And so, recently, you know, I was, uh, you know, the Questions with the Audience Wednesday, it was, it was kind of like a generic topic thing, like, you know, send in any sort of questions you want, send in... Um, send in like you know kind of just like random off the wall questions it doesn't matter what and you know i'd answer all of them but like you know apparently you guys started like running out of questions or something and so i was uh and so i i put a category or a topic on it and so last wednesday we did um personal questions like resolutions for the new years um 2017 and then um uh, pretty much any questions you wanted to ask me. So I wanted to clarify that when I, when I put a topic on the questions with the audience Wednesday segment, is the topic doesn't necessarily set the whole tone for the show. Like it's, the topic is kind of there to give you um, an idea to think about questions to come up with them, and then uh, even if you don't like the topic or if you have other questions outside of the topic. You, you can still send in any question you want and I'll answer them, but the topic or the category is there in order to be able to provide um, something or whatever for you to think about and whatever. But anyway, it's Wednesday and uh, I know a lot of you are going back to college soon, so the holidays this year were crazy for me. I'm not sure about you guys, but they were extremely busy for me. And so I, I just kind of got like hammered and stuff like that. But I think I only missed one Friday with friends because of the Christmas. It was Christmas or the New Year's Eve and whatever. But anyway, the topic surrounding this Wednesday, I decided to do an advice column. Well, an advice episode. And so I wanted you guys to send me in like just things that you needed advice on or like questions that you had that you kind of wanted to think about and whatever like that. And so... um I'm trying to find a way maybe to do it anonymously or whatever, but I was actually really interested in the questions that you guys brought in. I was very happy with a lot of them. And so I've got them right here. And also there was one other thing that I wanted to try. I might not do it right now, but I was thinking about live streaming an episode soon, which it, I could live stream it on YouTube. I could live stream it onto Instagram. And do an Instagram live video of maybe a Friday with friends or whatever. And so that way you could, it would be a live talk show and we could answer questions as you guys commented them. So that's pretty neat. But anyway, we are about one fourth into the Target gift card giveaway. And so uh, for details, go on to Snapchat. But I mean, all you have to do is follow on Podbean, follow on YouTube, and then. Uh, if you want to, I've got a post up on Facebook. You can either share the post on Facebook, or you can share the um, share the story on Snapchat. And so, either way is fine with me. I just really am trying to get the name out there and push the advertising and stuff like that. Um, I should be getting um, like flyers in, like little flyers, and I was going to go around into spots like the library. Uh, for the Athens Library and like places where I know that like teenagers go or like college kids and so I'm kind of excited about that I'm just kind of waiting for the design to get back to me so it's pr I'm pretty looking forward to that but um anyway let's get to the questions and uh, just excited to answer these and anyway so the first question and I don't really I mean I'll keep them all anonymous it doesn't really matter to me but the first one says Dear Cole, say I have a bit of a situation come up where I need to hide a 150 pound object concealed by trash bags somewhere in the ground. Where is the best place to go about doing so? Um, now, I personally can say that I have been in this situation, and I'm um, not, not going to go into detail, but some of the best place to hide them, hides them, some of the best place to hide them or to look for to have people not look for them is sometimes in places that are completely obvious. Like I remember, um, if you can get your hands on it, I remember watching one NCI episode where the guy hid uh, a 150 pound object inside of a, a column or a pillar as they were doing construction. And so he like put the, the 150 pound object in there and then the concrete poured up around. I mean, they found them. So I mean, that might not be the best idea or 
sometimes you want to hide it like in the backwoods anywhere nobody's gonna find it and so you, you may have to like just put it in the trunk of your car or put it in the back of your van and you have to drive like absolutely perfectly to raise a of raise no suspicion obviously of course and so you might want to try that and um don't do it really really late at night because that adds a lot of suspicion you might want to do it more like at six or seven kind of where all the rush hour traffic is so i mean like it will be hard to single you out because you forget if you get pulled over at like two in the morning obviously they're going to be like hey what are you doing you know and you have to answer questions as to why you have a 150 pound object in your trunk and so I would say do it like either early in the morning or like kind of towards dark and so that way you can take the roads and then get to where you need to be and now the thing is if you're going to hide it into the ground what you don't need to do is you don't need to go out there and dig the hole and have the 150 pound object on you at the same time so like say for instance what you'll need to do is like drive out there separately before you come into Ob not contact before you come into the possession of the 150 pound object and so what like drive out there and then like either dig the hole or find a spot maybe in a river and so go and it needs to be like a long long process so like you'd have to go to the store and you know buy maybe the duct tape in cash obviously wear a hat and then buy the duct tape and cash kind of like never look up above 90 degrees so like always kind of stay angled down when you're looking and so go to like a dollar general to buy the duct tape go to a family dollar to buy the trash bags go to walmart maybe to buy some heavy items or a bin i mean never buy all the stuff in the same place and always purchase it with cash and then go and have everything ready and then already have like say if you're going to put it in the bottom of a lake or the bottom of a river already have that all decided before you do whatever and never carry all of the items in the car at the same time so like go out there find a good spot to hide it and then like put all the supplies and then bring the 150 pound object out there later and then wrap it up really tight like with the duct tape and then if you're using cinder blocks, like, you know how it has the two holes in the middle? Wrap the duct tapes between the holes and then around the object. And so that way it would really sink to the bottom and it really wouldn't have a chance of floating back up because the cinder block, I mean, it's like locked into place. Or if you're going to bury it, make sure that you bury like really, really deep. And I know that would take a lot of time, but you always want to be cautious and not get caught. So for instance, go out there and work on the hole like a little by a little by a little, and then that way you don't have to do it all in one sitting and you don't like exhaust yourself. And make sure this is all done before you possess the 150 pound object because you need to get rid of it quick once you already earn the possession of it. So make sure all of this is already done. So dig the hole maybe about like six to eight feet deep. And what I read was fill the hole up like to where there's like two to four feet of open hole left and then put a dead dog on top of it like either kill a dog or put a dead dog or a dead cat on top of it and then cover that up with dirt so that way when like say for instance they did get on your tail and uh, see it's already deep enough if the if they're sniffing for the dogs to try to find the scent what you need to do is um like so like the dog sniffs there and he barks and so the officers dig, I don't know why they'd be officers, but the people dig it up who's looking for it and then they find the dog and then it's kind of like a false alarm. And this also might be like extremely, extremely gross, but say like, for instance, um, as an example, your 150 pound object uh, had like fingertips and dental records. Um, this would be really gross, but you need to get rid of those. So cut the fingertips off. If for instance, it was that, or, I mean, if the 150-pound object was just a lot of bowling balls, see, then you wouldn't have to worry. But uh, say, for instance, it, it was a human, um, get the all traces to where, you know, like fingertips and dental records, so they'd have a hard time to match the the 150 pound object but anyway that's that's what i would say uh to do follow follow that procedure in like 99 out of 100 times you probably won't get caught i mean i've never done that before so i mean i can't i can't really back that up so anyway i would say do that um dear cool 
What is the best method for falling asleep when there's quite a bit on your mind? Now, um, to me, I'll just take a lot of oxycodone, but that might not be the healthiest thing to do. So I would suggest not doing that. But a lot of things, um, just going to be personal. I mean, this is an advice column. So if you guys are like sending in personal, I'll give you some personal things back. A lot of the times I'll go through like breathing exercises or I'll try to induce like sleep paralysis, but it never works because my body always starts to itch and I have to scratch it and it aggravates me. But like if there's a lot on your mind, imagine like, okay, this is really weird. So don't like judge or say anything. But I imagine that there is, um, oh my goodness, I don't want to share this. There's a pyramid inside of my head and it like pushes all the thoughts out, whatever. And so I just focus, I focus on one object. Um, that's pretty much what it is. I focus on one object and then try to flatline everything else. So for me, it's a pyramid. I don't know why, but that's the first thing that came to mind. And so a pyramid and it pushes and it pushes everything out. And then once I've focused on that and I've flatlined the rest of my brain, um, I'll focus on breathing. And so I'll take like longer breaths than usual, exhale longer breaths than usual. And so if there's a lot on my mind and I know that I'm going to be restless, um, I'll try to, I'll, I'll do that first of all. And then I'll just lay completely still in bed and do that. And I'll focus on one, one like imaginary object inside of my brain or inside of my mind. And then I'll go through breathing exercises to try to do that. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's aggravating me. But I'll go through like breathing exercises in my mind while trying to stay as completely still as possible. And so, I mean, if that doesn't work, sometimes it's just you can't sleep. I mean, to be honest. So I'll get up and I'll grab something to eat, like a midnight snack, or I'll play on my phone for a little bit longer, or I'll just do something like until I at least try to get tired and some nights you're not even going to be able to get sleep that's just how it is if you've got a lot on your mind so some nights you just need to accept the fact that you won't be able to fall asleep until you're tired and then you'll have to pay for it the next morning but that's just how it is sometimes and I've been there and done that not been able to fall asleep till 3 30 4 whatever in the morning and then I'll just be in here I'll play on my phone play on the xbox go get something to eat in the kitchen sometimes though um like, if, if I have, like, a lot on my mind, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I'll go outside if it's not, like, too cold or if it's, I mean, it's never too hot. But I'll go outside if it's not too cold and I'll just, like, sit on my front porch sometimes, like, at, like, 4 in the morning because there's no cars. And, I mean, we do have street lights, and it makes me kind of sad, but I can, you can always, like, see the stars. They put in, like, two new street lights by my house, and it aggravates me. But you can see, like, all the stars and I mean, it's just so peaceful. I, I heard it described one time as like, because you don't have any expectations at that moment. You don't have any sort of responsibilities at the moment. And you can be completely like just relaxed. And that's helped me a lot too. And it'll, it allows me to be able to sort out what's going on in my mind and then go back into like my room and then try to sleep and so I would say try a couple of those things try breathing exercises try focusing on just a single thing and now don't focus on like a thought like what um, what's on your mind don't focus on a thought don't focus on an idea a person focus on an inanimate object something simple like for me it was just a pyramid but it wasn't like an Egyptian pyramid it was just like a gray pyramid that like I saw in a math book maybe or something and focus on something like that focus I mean just focus on an object that this is really hard to describe but focus on an object that helps you push thoughts out of your mind and I know that that's like really hard to think about but just let it come to you I don't know that's what a pyramid did with me but anyway try that um okay so I got this next question and it says my dog who is 14 years old and is pretty much blind and deaf has started uh, peeing in the garage. He has always been a good dog, but recently he has been making messes. How do I get him to stop peeing in the garage? Well, I was doing some research on this, and it says that if you have an adult dog that like starts to make messes or like pees in the house, is what they were saying, is that it's usually the cause of two things, and that's either a medical condition or uh, a life-changing event. And I've got it pulled up right here, actually. But it says... Um, if 
if it is the cause of a medical condition, to be safe, take uh, the dog to the vet. Take it to the vet, and they'll probably need to do like a urine analysis or whatever. But if it's a medical condition, it could be um, urinary tract infection, bladder stones, kidney disease, uh, a lot, a lot of that. And then it says that one of them could be arthritis. Now, if the dog is, if he's 14 years old, I mean that that might be the underlying cause of that because. Arthritis, it says that painful joints can make dogs reluctant to make the effort to even go outside. So if um, I knew a dog that was blind and deaf and the family, I mean, they'd had the dog since it was a puppy and it was like 11, 12. And once it started peeing in the garage, they gave it to the pound and the shelter. And I mean, that's probably like the lowest thing that you could ever do if you've had that dog for that long is just give it up when um, it's like in a time of need. So for real... I mean, the dog's been, if, he, if he's been in your family for 14 years old, or for 14 years, I mean, he's going through a hard time, and I don't know what the life expectancy is of your dog, but if it is coming to an end, I know for certain that, I mean, it's hard on the dog, but it's a lot harder than you on the dog, to be honest with you. And, um, I mean, that's how it was with the cat that I've had for, like, since I was seven. And so, ever since he died, I've never been a cat person because that was like the only cat that was awesome. And so, I mean, it's a hard time for the dog. I mean, you may not realize it. You know, the dog, I mean, it's just natural. But, um, take it, take him to the vet, him or her, I don't know, it didn't clarify. Oh, he, take him to the vet and see, um, see if the vet can figure out what's wrong. I mean, the vet would be able to give you a lot more, um, of an accurate diagnosis or whatever than I would be able to. But I was on dogchatforum.com. That's where I found this. I was doing some research. And so it said um, outside influences if the if it's not a medical condition. Um, it could be if you added a new pet to the household. Um, I know your family, so I don't think it was the addition of a new baby to the household unless I'm really out of the loop. Um, death in the family or someone going away. If, it, if he started doing that, like maybe when you went away to college. Uh, well, that was like a year ago. I don't know. If it was just recently, then never mind. Um, construction work going on in the home, change in the owner's household routines. And so that would have to be like, if you've had a dead set routine for the entire dog and then you just automatically just like flip it and change it all of a sudden, that would be, it wouldn't be like a minor change. Um, changes in the neighborhood, like a new dog moving in, separation anxiety, any scary event for your dog. And then it said in parentheses, you may have to give this one some thought because what might scare your dog might not scare you. And then um, a new home. And so uh, stress and anxiety. And then, uh, and so it added a note that said, dogs do not punish their owners. So, I mean, like, he really cannot help the fact that he's peeing all over the house. So don't get mad at him because he's not trying to do it on purpose. And so my suggestion to you would be to um, take the dog to the vet. And if it's not a medical condition, then um, really try to, I guess, retrain him. And it says that dogs always learn a lot faster from praise for doing the right thing than from punishment for doing the wrong thing. So I would say, for instance, like try to retrain him to go and use the bathroom outside again. And so if if you could see if it like the way he's moving, if it could be arthritis or if it could be, you know, whatever in, in whatever's case. But Try to do, uh, take them to the vet. That would be my uh, first whatever. And then, so another question, this wasn't, wasn't really a personal or advice column, but that's okay, because I mean, it's just a topic. But it says that with the recent fires in the mountains um, up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, around there, uh, they have traced it back to two kids that started it. How do you feel towards them? Um, I feel like they knew that there was a possibility of this spreading into a full-out wildfire and that they knew that this could become something really big, but I don't think that they expected it to. But then again, we were in a drought for months, and so I think that they were just trying to be punk kids. Now, I don't know anything about them, and I don't know any any sort of like what goes through their head or anything. So, I mean, this is just how I feel if they were coming across. Now, these they could have been like two completely evil kids who were really trying to start a wildfire to kill people. But I think that they didn't really expect it to get that big. I just think that they were trying to, I don't know. I think they were just trying to start a fire, but I don't know if they thought it would 
effect as much as it did. And so it says that now that they have traced it back to two kids that started it, how do you feel towards them? Well, I think that it was stupid, first of all, to even sort of try to think about to do something like that when you know we've been in a drought. And I think that they thought it would be a fun practical joke or a fun prank to do. And so, I mean, I've been in a situation where I haven't really thought out a prank all the way through, to be honest, or thought out really anything all the way through. And so, um, I mean, I, I've, I've been in their shoes, but not like, not that far. And so, I mean, I can understand the fact of wanting to do a practical joke, but I also have been in the shoes of taking a practical joke too far. Now, for those of you that personally know me, you, you probably know like a lot of examples of that, to be completely honest. But um, how do I feel towards them? I, I think that if there were two kids, they don't have, they don't have like, well, I mean, I'm 18. They were like, what, 16 or 17? So, I mean, this is kind of like talking to me too. But they, they didn't have, I guess, the maturity or foresight to really see how much it would affect other people. And it, I mean, if you're going to play a practical joke or a prank, you've got to be able to have a foresight to see how it's going to affect everything and how this is going to really affect people in the long run. And so, I mean, I feel like disappointment as in that they didn't expect it to go that far, but it did. And I mean, it killed people and it ruined businesses and it ruined lives and it completely killed a city like that was built on tourism. And so, I mean, I just feel extremely not like a father figure, what in the world, disappointed, I don't know, I mean, I just think that it was really stupid to do, and, but, being in their situation, not, not like going that far, taking a practical joke too far, I can, I mean, I can relate, I can, what's the word, empathize, not sympathize, I don't know, I don't know what that means, or something like that, but, I mean, seeing that, but, that was, I mean, it was like, just a practical joke taken too far, in my opinion, I don't really know a lot about them, but, um, <laughs> This question says, LOL, how do I accept our new president? I mean, you accept him like everybody else does. I mean, you're going to have to, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. I mean, he's the new president, and so you're just going to have to accept him. And to be honest, you're just going to have to hope that he does well. And I mean, you're really, really going to have to be behind him and support him in the bottom line, because if he does not do well, that in turn is going to affect you, affect your family, affect your job. I mean, it's going to affect everything if he messes up. So in accepting a new president, whether you don't agree with him as a person, whether you don't agree with his morals, whether you don't agree with his policies or his plans or his ethics or what he's doing, you need to support the fact that he is our president and he is guiding one of the biggest powerhouse countries in the entire world and he is guiding 300 million people and i think that was like a rough estimate of the citizens and he is guiding all of these people now in a position of a lot of authority so if you don't support him if you don't back him personally if you don't back his policies his ethics like i just said you need to accept him by supporting the role he plays don't i mean if you feel don't support him if you don't support him as a person at least support the role that he is in as a president and so you need to support the president to always be able to make good decisions to always be able to guide the country in a way that maybe you feel it needs to be or the fact that the country needs to be and you don't agree with that but you need to support the president no matter what, no matter who they are, in order to make good decisions that will benefit the entire country in the long run. And so I, say, I would say that that is how you accept the new president with a thing of support. Um, <laughs> Dare Cole, how do I explain to the FBI without looking like a maniac the fact that my friend is going to steal the Declaration of Independence? Um, yeah, I mean, you just got to straight up tell him. Uh, that's about me. Um, so my new question is, why are Italian clothes or shoes so nice? And does that count? <laughs> um, yeah, that count. I mean, this, is, I'll answer it. Uh, but it's, uh, I think that it's honestly the quality of the material over there and the craftsmanship put into like whatever they do, whether it be pizza, whether it be cars, whether, I mean, they're the city of, is it Venice, Italy? I'm pretty sure it is. I don't, I'm drawing a blank. And um, 
the city is so beautiful and so like well constructed. I mean, they even have the canals things. And Italian craftsmanship is so nice. And I think it's just how far you can trace it back to Italian painters, um, Italian architects. Is that it? Italian construction? I mean, in general, they've always had a like handiwork for craftsmanship. Or I think that's the right a, a knack for craftsmanship, and so their clothes and shoes are always so nice because I mean that's always what they've done is they've put so much thought or like whatever into the craftsmanship of one piece or whatever, and so that's always why I thought that they were extremely really nice. So the next question I got was, um, how does one stay sane in Mrs. Moss's class? So coming from, you know, I was in Miss Moss's class and it was with, uh, like, you know, my entire class. And Miss Moss was crazy. And um, she was very bipolar. Like, she would come in one day and she would be like, oh, listen, you know, you guys can get away with everything. You know, I'm really happy, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then the next day she'd come in and she'd take up everybody's phones and... And so, um, it's really hard to stay sane in her class, And but how do you do it? I would say you always have to adjust to how Miss Moss is feeling that day. So if she's, if she's feeling like, you know, kind of bad, you kind of have to like not be so rambunctious or whatever. And if she's feeling in a good mood, then you can kind of play that to your benefits or whatever. And I know that she loses a lot of grades and that she kind of leaves class for um, half the time. But um, you just kind of have to play it by ear with her. And honestly, I don't think the Bible school is ever getting rid of her. So you'll be with her until she leaves, which is kind of sad. And I'm sorry. But uh, that, that's how I'd say to do it. Um, what are the pros and cons of leaving for a college versus staying home and going to a local college? For example, Calhoun. Um, well, I mean, there's obviously pros and cons to both, which is why you asked me to weigh them. I don't see why you'd ask me if there weren't. But um, let's talk about staying home. So some of the pros to staying home to go to college is, A, you still get to live at home. So you don't have to worry about groceries. Um, you might not have to worry about getting a job, but you might have to. I guess it just depends. Um, if you stay home for college, you've got that. Um, depending on how many of your friends stay home for college, you've still got that familiar feel. Um, you're not in a new place. So, I mean, you still kind of got everything is familiar, right? I use it like four times, the word. But staying home for college has all of that. Um, usually, staying home for college is a lot cheaper than going off because you'll be going to a community college. Unless, um, I know some people that stayed home here, but they went to UAH, a four-year. And um, so, But they were able to stay home because they lived close to the school and go through that. But um, staying home for college, kind of, the cons of it, it kind of limits... Um, you as a person I would say because you don't get that sense of independence and you don't get um, that great feeling of going off and being able to try to become your own person like truly live on your own meet new friends you're responsible for everything you've got to get food I mean you, you've kind of got to adapt to become an adult and so I would say the cons of that also the cons are um, to staying home for a community college are obviously uh, you really don't get to meet a lot of new people your age, for instance. Like, because um, usually community colleges kind of range very widely because it's like a lot of people coming back and trying to get their degree. So um, you, you could get a lot of ages and age groups in there into a class. And um, so, like, say, for instance, if you went off, some of the pros of that were you get to meet a lot of new kids your age. You get to meet a lot of new friends uh, that are around your age group or whatever, your peers and whatnot, and you get to really experience um, the feeling of becoming an adult, uh, sort of like venturing out and whatever. And so, um, in my personal opinion, I would say the pros for going off are a lot better than the pros for staying home, but it's also a little more, ex a lot more expensive probably, and um, it's a lot more expensive, and it's, it's a little more stressful going off depending on like how you adapt to it. But um, a lot of people, it's a lot more stressful to stay home. But in my personal opinion, I would say go off for your freshman year and then transfer back if it gets too much. Because you, um, there's only one time for you to be able to meet like other true freshmen your age, you know, coming in. I would say at least go off for a year or two maybe and then come back and do whatever. And that would be, that would be my advice. Um, how to let your girlfriend know that um, you were gay. Um... Just, I mean, 
I don't see why you have a girlfriend if you were gay unless you're going for that beard. But, um, I mean, you just gotta tell her because obviously if you're gay, you're not going to be enjoying that relationship. So, I mean, you just gotta come out and say it. Um, what might be a good way to save money or <laughs> avoid going broke over the holidays? Now, um, my grandmother does this. What she'll do is she will set aside a certain, uh, amount of money every month and then so that way when she gets to the holidays she has a holiday fund now for a lot of people if you know you're in college and listening to this it's really hard just to set aside money period but um, that's what she does she gets a holiday fund and she sets that aside strictly every year so that way she has money to spend on her grandchildren for whatever and so um, to save money over the holidays I would say either do that or just penny pinch donating to the Salvation Army. <laughs> no, don't do that. Do a holiday fund. Don't give up on charity. But um, that would be a good way. Do Set aside um, a certain amount of funds monthly every time or every week or whatever, all year. And then that will really, really put you at ease on the holidays when you have this nest egg for whatever you want to do. Or, I mean, if your family just doesn't care, don't save up any money, don't buy any gifts, and then just get them all cards that talk about how Christmas is the whole feel and, you know, the giving atmosphere. And then they should be happy with that. So, I mean, go for that. Um, what are some good tips for somebody starting a new job? Um, I would say um, be open-minded. Understand that your bosses are going to be wrong sometimes, but that still makes, I mean, that still means that you have to listen to them. As long as it doesn't go against your morals or ethics, uh, listen to your bosses, even though if they could be wrong sometimes. But if you don't listen to them, you're going to get fired. Be open-minded to the aspect of the job is only going to be as good as you make it. So you can come in every day dreading it, or you could come in every day as a new opportunity to, no matter whatever you do. Like when I worked at Hometown, I worked at retail. I had to bag groceries. I had to go out and get buggies, restock shelves. But days I would come in not wanting to do that. But what, like, I would really enjoy, I would start up conversations with people as they were checking out, putting their groceries in there. And, you know, bagging their groceries, I'd tell them maybe a joke or whatever. And I would really try to, like, talk to the people and really try to just, like, kind of brighten their day a little bit. And when I ran the cash register, I would be able to do um, stuff like that. Restocking the shelves, I would just kind of listen to music or whatever. And so the job is only going to be as good as you make it. So my a couple of tips, be open-minded. Listen to your bosses, even though um, they might be wrong, because you don't really want to get on their bad side, because they're in charge of your pay, and uh, if you have a job, pay is probably going to be one of the only reasons to have the job. So do that, and then try not to dread it, because once you start to dread it, then that's when it becomes an everyday dreadful thing, like the first time you dread it. So really try to reverse psychologize yourself and try to flip it around to where you can see the good in it and not the bad in it. And so, because a job will get old fast. Um, man, I don't even... Dear Cole, I have a very intense fetish for Harambe. Um, I, I, can we leave him in 2016, please? But I don't know how to explain it to my girlfriend. I've asked her to put on a gorilla suit before, but she gave me kind of a weird look. I've also asked her to make hooting noises and beat her chest as well, still with no luck. I even one time shot her with a tranquilizer, and she threatened to break up with me if I tried that again. Should I just come out and explain it, or what? Please help. Sincerely, Anonymous. Even though I see his face in the Snapchat. <laughs> um, well, obviously, you've got to keep her if she is still say, staying with you after you've already tranquilized her. Because she threatened to break up with you if you did it again. So, I mean, if you've already made those requests and then you tranquilized her and she's still staying with you, I'm just going to say come out and ask her anyway. Because if she's still staying with you after you tranquilize her, she's probably a ride or die. And if she doesn't stay with you and she breaks up, then listen, you just go find yourself another girl that uh, is obviously into these Harambe fetishes. How does one learn to open up and trust people again after they have been messed over <laughs> so many times? Um, It's hard. It's, it's really hard to, once you, like, let your guard down, and once you begin to trust a certain person that, um, and then they betray that trust, 
it's really hard to do that again with another person. But in, I'm just, don't stop. I mean, there comes to a point where being too trusting is kind of like dumb on your part. Like you can't just ignore obvious signs and stuff like that. But I mean, being a trusting person is a good thing. And yes, you're going to get burned sometimes. I've gotten burned sometimes being a trusting person. But um, never stop because it's trusting people like that that really make the world go. And it's the nice people like that that really make everything better. And But how do you keep doing that over so many times? Um, it's a sense of just getting right back on the horse. I mean, you cannot let what other people do to you affect your personality and who you are as a person like at all. And if you're a trusting person and somebody betrays that, then that's all on their heads. And all of the guilt is on them because they knew who you were and they manipulated that to your advantage. And so get stay out there because they're no matter how few and far between how scarce they are there is somebody out there and they will benefit you a lot more than sometimes you'll benefit them and they will really really bring out the strengths in your flaws and you know all that other romantical stuff but there is people out there people persons whatever and so just keep being who you are because honestly it's the people who manipulate you who are at fault and i know it's hard because you really have a hard time establishing an open relationship again but never give up who you are underneath and so maybe be a little more cautious uh, when you start out with a new relationship and if you're a little more cautious that'll drive away the ones who aren't really have a dedication to make it work you know what I'm saying so try I guess an advice would be a little bit more um, not necessarily hard to get to uh, to start with but don't fall head over heels so fast you know I mean that might be kind of a harsh way to say it but if you're a really trusting person you need to make somebody earn that trust before you give it to all of them so I know that might be kind of hard but be cautious and foretelling in uh, the beginning stages of it and then um, see where that goes from there I've got a lot of questions like this is really long how do you deal with cocky fans Alabama fans in particular um you can't because uh, the Crimson Tide is an unstoppable force so we kinda have a right to be cocky because our team is really good but how do you deal with them um, just be better than us in football and that's about it but oh these are all pictures oh these are all the videos I hope you guys enjoyed that soldier boy cover <laughs> put that on my youtube if you want to see that what is the purpose of a butt crack like the actual crack in the butt it's like two legs and then when they come to like if you didn't have one you would have like very limited mobility on walking or running because it was just like one big connected piece of tissue then um it would be like your legs wouldn't be able to go like back and forth as as wide you know what I'm saying like if you try to take a long stride it would be stopped by just the whole thing of like big tissue what is one of the things you miss most about being in high school podcast question well, I just thought that this guy was just messaging me to ask me what I missed the most about it um the student section at sports that that is the biggest thing I think that I miss about um, high school because honestly our student section was really good and um, like we had a really good student section for volleyball for basketball and so um i really enjoyed that and i really miss that um what is a good way to get over uh, a mental block so this one was also kind of weird if you want to think about like what i talked about trying to go to sleep easier um imagine a mental block as a physical thing like this this is what i do imagine your mental block as a literal block of concrete and so your problem is like whatever and so for sometimes what I'll do is you know listen to music through headphones but I try to imagine like a literal mental block crumbling away in um, in an instance or whatever and so um, she called it a head game um, but uh, a mental block I, I like to imagine it as a physical thing to try to get over and sometimes you can't but sometimes what you need to do is take a break from whatever you're doing 
and go do something completely different because if it, if you're trying to think of an answer or if you just cannot physically get something like maybe a sport or something you're trying to rehearse a routine do take a break and go do something completely different like i know for one instance i was trying to do this homework and i couldn't get it and i was getting i mean like it was like little 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 things and then i would just get so frustrated because of all this little stuff and i just dropped everything and i went and skateboarded for like an hour and then i came back like with a fresh mindset and like a new page and i was like all right so now i sat down and i was able to see a lot more like how it made sense because I came back fresh and I wasn't so frustrated over everything. But try try some of those. Imagine it as a physical, like a physical mental block. And I don't know, that's worked for me before. And I probably not work for you. Or take a fresh start. Take definitely take a break. Anyway, guys, those are all the questions that I had. Um, I really enjoyed doing the advice advice column. Um, it was great. And obviously, we are probably over 45 minutes. I don't know. This is in two segments or something. But um, anyway, guys, I loved I loved doing this. And so Friday with Friends will be this weekend between Thursday and Saturday. Um, you know, people have girlfriends, and I have to we work around dates and stuff like that or just busy plans. So um, I'll keep you guys updated on Snapchat. Be sure also to follow on Snapchat for the gift card giveaway. And anyway, guys, I love you all, and stay tuned.